Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Nutritional Revolution podcast. We have a returning guest for you guys because we had to bring him back to dive into supplement questions because we ended our last episode. If you guys missed it, episode 43, we have Peter Setna returning for, with us today. If you guys aren't familiar, go back and listen to episode 43, where we talked about all things Peter's nutrition and hydration game plans. Um, if you're not familiar, he has raced in the Tour de France and made a transition into more self, um, self-supported self gravel racing. So we're going to be diving into a, a bit of how maybe he uses his supplements for that. But if you guys caught the end of the last episode, he had made a comment about beta alanine and some, how he, how it works. So uh-huh. we're going to dive into what he meant by that, what he uses, how he uses it, all of that stuff. But thank you so much for joining us again, Peter. <clears throat> Yeah, no worries. I guess we had unfinished business. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so we are recording this in the midst of a storm here. So hopefully we get yeah. this all out in one straight episode. Um, but we would love to, as you mentioned beta alanine at the end of the last episode. Um, are you in a bit of a postseason right now? Or are you already ramping up training or what's going on with your activity schedule? I'm ramping up. I'm training pretty hard trying okay. to you know, that beautiful time of the year when you just kind of seem to go to bed tired from a workout and wake up stronger, you know, you kind of, the gains come fast. And then later the rest of the season, it's like, you know, you get that first 20% back real quick. And then that last 5% takes months, but, um, yeah, I'll do a a local race here at the end of the month. Uh, the grasshopper race is kind of like the traditional season kickoff for a lot of folks in Mm -hmm. the Northern California area. Um, before the big stuff really gets going. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. But I also, you know, I take, a, <clears throat> I take an off season from supplements too. I think when yeah. it's your job is performance and all this stuff, you, you burn out on pills. Yeah. You know, <laughs> too. So, you know, I, I haven't really started that yet, but I, okay. I do know it well. And I've did that for a long time in the world tour. Yeah. So you have, you have your routine of when to start certain supplements and when to stop them and that kind of stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> and I just, it's more about literally, I mean, I'm, I'm simple enough in that. I just, I don't want to always be swallowing pills. Like you, yeah. you just get tired of it sometimes. <laughs> yes. And you feel like you just want your body to just process itself, you know? So there is times, I think with each supplement we talk about, I think, um, there's times to load on it, but there's also times to give your body a break and to go through its processes naturally without mm-hmm. that aid. Cause I think it is good to recover as naturally as possible too. Yeah. Yeah. So talking about recovery, hmm. what would be some supplements that you use or that you're, um, you transition on and off of? Yeah. You know, I think I, uh, antioxidants, you know, mm-hmm. vitamin C's and stuff. Um, mm-hmm they're good. They're good for the immune system. You know, they break down free radicals and all that stuff, but, um, sometimes to get better, you also want that inflammation process to happen. Like that's how you get better. If you're minimizing the damage effects that you do to yourself, which is training, that is you're you're naturally creating a stimulus response for your body to be like, Oh crap, I don't want to do this again. I need to build back stronger. Right. Right. And so then all of a sudden, if you take these pills to like mitigate that effect, your body won't necessarily build back stronger, you know? So coming into moments of high performance, yeah. Antioxidants, like prime, it's like priming the system, right. And like topping off everything. Yeah. Like right now, for example, I'm not racing for quite a few weeks still. I'm running myself ragged every day in training and I'm forcing my body to assimilate all of that, so Mm -hmm. to speak. So antioxidants are kind of like a very much an on off type of thing. Mm. Um, Yeah. Yeah. I, I makes me think of the, there was a study that came out, I think it was probably a couple of years ago now where they were, I think a lot of like that antioxidant um, consumption post endurance activity really got loud, I think in the public mm-hmm. in the sense where they were using, it was a thousand milligrams, I think of vitamin C and 400 I use, I want to say a vitamin A, I think. Mm. Um, and it, for a period of time, it became this thing that was like, don't eat 
any form of antioxidants whatsoever. Don't put berries in your smoothie. <laughs> like don't, you know, like to that point. And I think mm-hmm. it's important to point out that that was a, like, there's been one study <laughs> that looked at it. It was specifically yeah. pretty high doses of vitamin C and vitamin A. And so from a supplemental perspective, yeah, I think you're, you're spot on. We did, there's blunted effects and, you know, um, adaptation responses there. So, so you're saying with those things, would you, if you're in like a, like a high build period, or is it just like a couple weeks out from a key event where you just want to, like, there's not much more adaptation to be made, but you want to stay on top of that recovery response. Yeah. I think it's just deciding what your big picture objective Mm -hmm. is, right. Is it, you know, fitness gains for something down the road, or is it, you know, something's coming up immediately and you're more concerned about recovering and about, um, staying healthy. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah, it's just, yeah, it's big picture. Yeah. That's a, that's a great point. I think people sometimes want to think they need to like recover and be the best after every day's session. And in reality, yeah. they might be blunting some things. So I think yeah, I know. Good... I think it's, it's good to be, you know, this is again, like this overarching idea, but it's good to be a little bit shelled sometimes mm-hmm. a little bit F if you will, you know, like, <laughs> you know, I have this, uh, this whoop bracelet on as of this year, cause athletic yeah. brewing is doing this instead of dry January, like see yeah. how alcohol actually oh, affects nice. yeah. uh, your sleep habits, which is mm-hmm. super interesting. The only thing I'm figuring out right now is being a new dad. Like I'm just permanently screwed. Um, <laughs> with that, I don't recover at night, right. but, um, I'm really curious to see how the alcohol thing, cause I love my beer, but, um, yeah. I do feel like with all this information these days, a big part of, and this is all training too. And I know we're getting away from supplements. You got me on a tangent now, but (laughs) we've lost the feeling, the art of, of listening to your body. Mm -hmm. Like everybody is just so about these numbers now. And, And I have these young riders coming to me about training numbers and like, following their, their CTLs and training peaks and their TSSs and all that stuff and the whoop strain scores. And it's like, everyone's searching for that, that perfect recovery or that perfect training number. And it's almost like a game to get the numbers instead of actually just listening. Like you want to overreach sometimes. Yeah. You want it to say you're fatigued, all these things. And, and to push through that, if you don't push through that, then you don't actually get better. Um, so I do think we're getting a little bit lost in the science and yeah. like, there's been a little bit of a, sometimes when you just turn off and you listen to your, your body, uh, things progress the right way. Yes. So. Yeah. I, I think you're spot on with that I, in speaking with you and a few other athletes who have been cycling for, you know, a, a good amount of time and aren't, aren't new to this. I think the responses are pretty, <laughs> the old school <laughs> they are pretty similar though. You know, it's like you guys have, um, you, you've come up without maybe some of the technology initially. And, and there's, there's that kind of like naturally learned response of your body and less maybe immediate reliance on gadgets and tech telling you when yeah. to rest and when to train and all that stuff. And so you kind of know, I like when we, we spoke with Ted King and I remember asking him about his fueling routine and he like, he's, he's like, I don't count. <laughs> he's like, I don't yeah. know how many grams of carbs I have per hour. <laughs> so yeah, I th- he just knows like what his body handles and operates well with. And I think that, I mean, that comes from a lot of obviously experimentation over totally. time and listening to your body. Right. So yeah, I think there's a lot to be, be said for that. And like you're saying, you need need some of those stressors to get that body to adapt. Um, so antioxidants kind of Mm. moving those around. What about things like vitamin D? I know that's one of your supplements that you use. Um, vitamin D is, I think it's always important to kind of have on board, Mm -hmm. but I also like exercising outside. So I, I get a lot of mine from, from mother nature and the sun. Um, I should probably be better about sunscreen, but I guess my hate of sunscreen helps my, my vitamin D there you go. It also helps my risk of cancer, but yes. Yeah. So do you <laughs> alternate? Like if you did a long ride outside and got sun exposure, do you not supplement with vitamin D that night or? Yeah, I don't, 
I don't do the vitamin D as much unless it's like in a multivitamin specifically mm. um, mm-hmm. or in a pack that I get from the feed that's helped me with some supplement stuff. Yeah. Um, it's just my deep, my vitamin D levels have never been crazy low. And I, I did benefit from, you know, kind of like a, a blood panel during my world mm-hmm. tour days. And they kind of looked at what I need, you know, yeah. specifically, you know, I, I always seem to need like higher iron and mm-hmm. my, my hematocrit was a bit lower than some teammates naturally. Hmm. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, I, I benefited from that, but never from like vitamin D supplementation. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think that that's, I mean, it's a great point. The skin yeah. prefers to make vitamin D from the sun for sure. And if you can't get that sun exposure, like yeah. many of us right now in the middle of winter, we're not I think it's cold. really important in the winter. Yeah. yeah. You got to, you, you know, you have, if you do go outside, you're in a jacket and stuff yeah. and, and all that. So, yeah. Yes. And then let's see from a sports performance perspective, you had mentioned beta alanine at the end of our last episode. Tell us about, yeah, beta-alanine. you know, I, so I have a few staples that I really believe in, you know, mm-hmm. and one is just, and, and I'm, it, it always sucks looking at your wallet or whatever, but like, you get what you pay for in supplements. You yeah. know, not all supplements are created equal. Um, you want one that is ideally formulated for, you know, with this podcast, athletes, you know, mm-hmm. people uh, who have a more active lifestyle, you uh, burn through certain certain amino acids more frequently mm-hmm. than others and, and whatnot. Um, but, you know, I think the staples that I've always really appreciated are on a multivitamin, just a good Mm -hmm. solid multivitamin, kind of just cover your bases, Mm -hmm. the beta alanine, which we can talk about, um, and, uh, some intestinal health. Mm -hmm. I think that's huge. You know, I think, um, this, I started working with, you know, the feed Swiss RX company, that's their Mm -hmm. in-house brand. And I actually reached out to them when we created a partnership because of this line of product. Mm -hmm. Um, they have a whole bunch that they've worked with, a pro cycling coach to create this line of supplements. Um, awesome. And one that I really go to is it's a probiotic mixed with this thing called gut health. Mm. Um, and <clears throat> when you're, you're consuming so much, if you, if you're in endurance sports, right, there's yeah. so much going in there. Not all of it is always the best. Sometimes if you're at a questionable restaurant or whatever, the night before mm-hmm. race, like you just, you need a really strong microbiome because when something goes wrong in there like you know when you get food poisoning like it takes like weeks to come back from it's not even like a crash and like a little bit of a a cut right like it's when your internal system is off like it really can throw you out of whack you feel weak for a long time so I think having a really strong gut and when you are in a race and you're taking these sugar bomb gels all the time for performance and and you know running fast then it's that can wreak havoc on your stomach too, you know? So I think, I think it's really important to protect your, your stomach health. And I noticed when I do kind of get on a regular program with some sort of GI assistance, right. That gut health probiotic combo that they have, um, it, uh, like, I mean, I, it's a little personal, but like, I'm just, I'm more regular all the time, you know, I'm predictable and, Mm -hmm. and I think that makes a big difference. Yeah. I think that's a common thing we hear when people supplement with probiotics, it gets that the digestive system in a bit more regular state. But I I think to what you're saying, talking about all the different things you're putting in there, whether, I mean, you're training long hours, burning thousands and thousands of calories on the bike and you're, I don't know, putting gummy bears and Swedish fish in (laughs) stomach consistently, you know, it, they, it, the foods you put in your body do start to shift that gut microbiome, but also the impact, right. Of lack of blood flow to the gut will impact the gut Mm -hmm. microbiome when you're exercising. So yeah, I think that you bring up a great point. The gut health thing, I think is such a fascinating area too. And I think we're going to see more and more research there. Um, Mm -hmm. 
I think it's, it's great. I, I'd be curious if you noticed this, I was reading a study recently and they were mentioning how they had athletes supplement with probiotics during the cold and flu season. Well, actually they, they took their team and they split them up and half of them used the probiotic and the other half didn't. Mm-hmm. And the half that used the probiotic saw a significantly reduced amount of like upper respiratory tract infections compared to the group that didn't interestingly enough. And so they weren't even looking at GI health, but they were looking at immune functioning. And I thought that was pretty fascinating too. Do you ever notice like less cold and flus? I mean, I haven't thought about it, but it makes yeah. complete sense. I mean, just that it's that kind of total body wellness where everything is just kind of yeah solid from, from the inside going out. Um, totally. I mean, I believe it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll link that in the show notes for the non-believers <laughs> if they want to read it. Um, so you mentioned the multivitamin and is that something, do you cycle that at all? Or do you take that 24 seven, 365? <laughs> More or less. Yeah, yeah. Just, uh, again, like I kind of just go a month without taking anything mm-hmm. in like November. <laughs> just yeah. sick of, yes. Cause you know, when you do listen to everybody, it's like, okay, you take these two probiotics and these three gut health and this mm-hmm. multivitamin and this vitamin C and these, you know, uh, beta alanine, and all of a sudden you're taking like 20 pills a day and you just yeah. get sick. And then you, you know, whenever you choke on one and you think you're about to die, and yes. <laughs> you know, that's like my biggest fear is I, I croak, like swallowing oh, a no. multivitamin. So, yeah. um, the multivitamin is good to just kind of like keep her on, keep on board, but you yeah. know, it's like, if you miss a day due to hopping on an airplane, it's no biggie. Right. Right. And the gut health, do you take that just when you're more in like peak kind of racing season and traveling, or do you try and take that pretty much all year? That one's more of like a all year round yeah. thing. Yeah. Nice. That's great. And the beta alanine that you mentioned, yeah. tell us about that kind of dosing timing. Yeah. You there's so many performance enhancing supplements out there. Right. And there's, there's studies and science behind all of them. Right. And some people swear by, you know, your nitric oxides and your creatines and this and that. And I'm not going to knock on any of those. Like some people really believe in them, but I've tried all of them and I feel like there's a lot of snake oil out there. Um, but the one thing where I actually feel a difference is beta alanine. It's this Mm. amino acid and basically it buffers lactate better, Mm -hmm. right? It, it minimizes that muscle lactic acid burn and kind of creates a buffer for you. Um, not like it numbs you. It doesn't like dull you. It just Mm -hmm. like keeps it away a little longer, makes you go, it lets you go a little deeper. Um, and you pe- peel it pretty much immediately, like mm-hmm. as soon as you first take a dose. Um, mm-hmm. However, it's been shown to be most effective when it's actually like long term loaded in your system. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that back in the day, a lot of sports team coaches and sports scientists would have us take it for I can't remember exactly, but I would say it's like six weeks out from our biggest objectives. Right. And you're taking Mm -hmm. like a fair amount of it every day for six weeks. And you kind of build up these levels, like within your bloodstream, and then you kind of get off of it for, um, a couple of weeks and you reset and you do it again. You kind of cycle like six Mm -hmm. or eight week cycles. Um, Mm. I don't do that. I just, I don't do all the counting. I just, for racing, I, I basically start taking it for, big training rides and races all year round. Um, and the days I, if I have a recovery day, if I have an easy ride or a flight, I don't take it, you know, and that's kind of like a, like a little like drop off. So Mm -hmm. maybe I'm not the most efficient with it, but it's also Mm. mentally easy. Um, I take three pills. Uh, I think they're all kind of, no matter who you find, they're generally the same, Mm dosage per pill. I want to say it's like 1600. Oh yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, what, what you'll feel is if you're not used to it and you, or you take too much, there's no bad, bad ill effect. Um, you can get really itchy for like a minute. Yeah. Like you just, you feel your skin feels scratchy. Um, like it prickly, um, which means it's working. It's fine. It goes away you'll be fine. (laughs) Um, but that one, 
yeah, I'm I'm a believer in that. So um, I kind of take that one regularly. Um, and so I worked with the feed to create kind of like Stetna's race pack, which is like this little like daily pouches, right? So you can customize like, oh, I want more vitamin C or a multivitamin or gut health or whatever. And um, so for mine, there's, you know, the the beta alanine, the multivitamin, I think they threw a fish oil in there, which is good fats are, are good and yeah. all of that. Awesome. Can we link that in the show notes for people? For the yeah, I'd love it if you do. Yeah. <laughs> okay, perfect. We'll link that in the show notes. So kind of on the beta alanine note, three pills a day, most days of the year. Do you try and take that pre-training? Yeah. You take it in the morning. Yeah. With your coffee or whatever, Mm -hmm. uh, just a little bit before your training, um, kind of stays with you all day. Um, and again, it's a loading thing, right? So Mm -hmm. that's the idea. Um, you know, before a really big race, if you are finally used to it, maybe I'll take four pills mm-hmm. and maybe it's just psychological. It's like, oh, this is a big one, <laughs> you know? yeah. but that's uh... well, pay placebo has a real effect. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> right. Uh, that's awesome. Yeah. The beta alanine, I've seen different things in the literature too, with regards to what you're saying, like initial doses for like even just vasodilation purposes or, um, the long-term, like you're saying with the lactic acid buffering component. Mm -hmm. And I I believe there's, um, in the literature, a, uh, milligram per kilogram recommendation to use, which is probably what, where you kind of learned to get your dosing from, but, um, yeah, yeah. The Um, paresthesia tingling feeling is a real thing. People can panic. (laughs) So it's good to know that that like tell people that that's, it's okay when that happens. Yeah. You just kind of start like rubbing your face really hard for like a minute and then you're good to go. (laughs) Yeah. Um, and then in the, I think this was in the Stetna, uh, feed pack too, was the nitric oxide. Do you, is is that in reference to the beta alanine or are you taking that separately? That is, I can take it or leave it. Um, Mm -hmm. I know there's enough science around it that shows it helps. Um, I feel like not everyone responds amazingly to it, but I do think it's, can only be a benefit, which is yeah. why I do take it. Um, you know, I was, I mean, gosh, this must've been 10, 15 years ago in the world tour when we were like, literally we had some team doctor, like juicing beets and <laughs> like before, like before beet juice became a thing, yeah. right. Which was like the original nitric oxide. So they yeah. were like getting these beet juice shots to us and stuff. And we were like, like on a mountain in the yeah. Tour de France, like chugging like a shot of beet juice or something. <laughs> and like <laughs> half the guys would throw up. And, oh no. Um, so now, now they have it in a pill. Um, yeah. It's another one of those buffers. I think some people respond better to it than others. Um, yeah. But I think it's a good thing. Um, kind of like the tingly thing. The only thing to watch out for that one, well, maybe not the nitric oxide pills. I think you're fine with that. But mm. when you chug beet juice for a performance benefit, you could think your kidneys are failing when you, yeah, yeah, but it's okay. Just remember that you drink beet juice in the morning. Right. Right. Yes. Yeah. I've had, uh, (laughs) I've had a client make that mistake, I think in a marathon and (laughs) yeah, not good, not good. Um, so yeah, I, I think all this is like spot on kind of with what you're saying is too, with some of these things, it is kind of like hit and miss and some people granted too, right. Are they taking the proper dose and is it a qualified totally. supplement brand? Um, I remember attending a webinar recently and it was a guy breaking down nitric oxide in different products. And he was saying mm. that there's a, um, in the production of some of these like quote unquote, nitric oxide boosting supplement powders and things like that is like some of them completely denature and ruin actually the, the molecule that has the nitric oxide like benefit. And so Mm -hmm. there's, um, you know, there's a small handful of supplement or like supplement products on the market that have, I think he has like their company that we're talking about has a patented process for maintaining the nitric oxide in the product, Mm -hmm. or you could juice a bunch of beets and go that route. Uh, (laughs) Right. Um, I did hear actually that arugula gram per gram has more nitric oxide than beets actually, interestingly Mm. enough. So if you want to load up on arugula, that's an option. Uh, (laughs) So, okay. So we got omega-3s, nitric oxide, beta alanine, vitamin D and a multi- anything I missed there? Oh, and the gut, the gut health one, right? Yep. Awesome. 
any other ones I'm missing that, that are in your mix? That's, that's about it. That's yeah. the secret supplement stetna stash. I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, all of those things I think are, I mean, many things that we will suggest because like you're saying, there's research behind them. And then if you can get a good quality brand supplement that, you know, has the proper dose for what we're seeing in the research, I think you can, you can see some benefits from that stuff. So we'll link in the show notes, the feeds Stetna's supplement oh, combo for the, that. for the listeners <laughs> to check it out. Um, and we want to quickly dive into, we didn't get to touch on it last webinar or uh, podcast recording, but your white rim FKT. Um, can you, I know we only have like 10 minutes here just, or so to dive into <laughs> it, but do you want to just give us a, give us a little bit of a story around that? Um, what was kind of your reasoning for seeking that out and what time were you trying to, to mm. beat? and all that stuff. Yeah, you know the the FKT is stands for the fastest known time. It's real big in the running world. Um it's catching on in in cycling. Mm -hmm. Uh more specifically off-road cycling and um basically it's it's course records on iconic trails running or cycling. Um mm -hmm. you know, so I mean, yeah, I guess you could go out and do your local backyard trail and call it an FKT or a record, but you know, like ones that really kind of peak the collective outdoor industry's mm -hmm. interest, you know, that are kind of prestigious trails, so to speak. Yeah. Um, it's kind of really took off. And I, I personally made a point to kind of champion these during the lockdowns, the COVID lockdowns, because nice. when we weren't able to race each other, it was like, Oh, this is a kind of a good way to like, do competition, you know, yeah. it's like, we can go out and you can, you know, basically try to race each other on different days on the same trail and try to beat each other's course record. Right. Um, yeah. and it's, it's a lot of fun because it throws instead of like interpersonal competition, it's like you, it's, it's almost like a, it's a solo effort, but it's, you know, you're picking the day, the weather, looking at the the wind, right? The start time. You you get to choose all of that. Um, yeah. Generally, they are uh, self supported. Mm -hmm. is what they're kind of. I mean, you can say like you have a. This is the fastest time for a supported mm -hmm. FKT, a self supported, but uh, the most popular is self supported. So no water hand ups, no aid stations out there. Um, even to the point where it's like, it's usually illegal to cache your own water like days mm. before, like you have to find it out there, whether that's stopping oh. at a gas station or filling up from a river with a, a filter bottle or whatever mm -hmm. it is. Um, so kind of the most famous one in biking right now is the White Rim mm. in Moab, Utah. It's a, a natural century, a hundred mile loop in the Canyonlands wow. National Park. Uh, it's phenomenal. Um, it had a, a blazing fast time by Keegan Swenson, who's the current big hitter in, in off-road racing. Yeah. Um, I went out there and uh, I went for it and I missed it. <laughs> oh, shoot. And I was kind of bummed about it. And it was like my big COVID project. So I kind of stuck around for a few more days and I went for it again. And then I got it. Nice. Um, yeah. And so that was a fun video. And um, I, think, I think it stoked a lot of people to try for their own fastest time or yeah. to uh, champion a route in their area. Uh, Keegan has since took it back by six seconds. So, oh no. Yeah. Five and a half hours and it comes down to six seconds on different oh. days. And <laughs> who knows? It could be like, yeah, it, it's a, uh, that comes down to like glitches in GPS, but you know what? Yeah. He has it. It's kind of an honor system still. Yeah. Um, since then I've gone for, and I still have the Coca Pelli trail. That's another nice. famous yeah. uh, trail that's goes from Grand Junction, Colorado to Moab, Utah. Wow. Um, that's 140 miles. Wow. Like 11 hours or something. Um, but that's a much more dynamic all mountain style trail. Mm -hmm. Um, up in our neck of the woods, I made a big point to uh, kind of promote Rose to Toads in Tahoe. That's uh, kind of like the big all day mountain bike ride. And it goes from the North Lake of Tahoe mm -hmm. at Mount Rose along mm -hmm. 
the rim trail and the iconic bloom trail so you kind of have like blue tahoe on one side you know nevada desert on the other side so this cool compare contrast visually and then it finishes down in south lake around heavenly with this famous downhill track called mr toad's wild ride so rose to toads um i established that kind of like set the the time to be and promoted it um and since then this summer another mountain biker took it from me which is great um wow. maybe i'll return but also you know it's kind of like I'm, I'm into the idea of putting your stamp on it and promoting it and i mean records will always fall yeah that's sport for everybody right like that's someone will go faster someday right <laughs> it's but yeah. um you know, so part of me might return to a few of these, like the white rim, but also at the same time, like there's so many other cool trails out there. Like I'd rather do something new and fresh. Yeah. That's awesome. The, the white rim. I mean, I mean, any of these things, how do you, you mentioned they have like typically are prestigious, well-known trails by the outdoor community. How, How do you, how do you train for something like that? Or, I mean, do you do it kind of in peak season or you kind of, I mean, I guess it was during the pandemic, right? So there was yeah. <laughs> different training protocol going on then. Um, but yeah, I mean, was your was it typical to kind of like building up for your standard race that you would talk from a training perspective or? Yeah, um, you can. Um, it's just kind of about, yeah, fitting it into the greater calendar, you know, mm-hmm. like whether it's. I mean, for half of the pandemic in 2020, Moab was locked down and they weren't allowing visitors, right? Because we all thought that was when you could catch COVID by opening your car door in the middle of nowhere. So it was like, (laughs) you know, it was like all when all our public lands were also locked down, then it became harder. Um, So it's, you know, it's about waiting for the time of year. And also on the flip side, like Coca Pelle was during my race season last Mm -hmm. year. So that's more of like a um fitting it in when mm-hmm. the weather lines up when the, the yeah. trails clear of snow when there's the dirt is in good condition and it's fast um and when it can make sense in terms of all your other objectives throughout the year so wow. but some people just want to train only for that and go for it and that's that's amazing and great too um, yeah that's awesome but i think i i and i hope they're here to stay like i think mm-hmm. it was a fun thing that came out of the pandemic but i do think they're relevant and I think certain people enjoy them more than yeah. traditional racing so I this this coming year I plan to go tackle tackle a few more like I don't That's want awesome. to like lose that from COVID I would like to yeah do one or two a year yeah yeah there's some there's got to be something that's nice and different than it's a different yeah. stimulus right than a you know a bunch of people and I don't know totally. drafting or you know it's a yeah. whole different, it's a solo, maybe a bit more mental. Big time. You know? So yeah, yeah. I, th- I like that. I think that's really neat with those three FKTs or, uh, um, that you did any of, were they all self-supported or mm-hmm. yeah, that's great. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, Rose to toads was done a little differently because it was in an effort to highlight our local trail builder out there, Mm -hmm. Tamba, which is the Tahoe area mountain bike association. Mm -hmm. Um, they're the ones that make all the amazing trails in Lake Tahoe that you all would mountain bike. If anyone listening goes to Lake Tahoe with a mountain bike, um, they have their biggest fundraiser of the year is on labor day. They ride Rose to toads and there are a few aid stations along the way. Mm. So in an effort to highlight them and support them and what they do. Should anyone want to do it on one of those days? Um, I did it in the spirit of their ride and I cached a bottle at the exact point where they normally have an aid station. And I made that public. Um, I said, you know, this was done to highlight these guys. Like this is, since I'm kind of the first one doing this, like this is the the way I'm doing it and and being public about it. Um, And I think the guy who just took it from me actually grabbed a uh had a bottle hidden at the same point so yeah. um again it's honor system but yeah. um yeah, yeah mostly it is self-supported though yeah I think I think that's good and and 
I mean, if people are doing it too, for a competitive aspect, it's, you want to know that someone's competing on the same level as you and that they're yeah. not getting handouts, you know, all oh, throughout the duration. Yeah. I, I, and FKTs aren't at the point where you're going to get like a pro sponsorship out of it yet. I mean, right. like, you know, it's, <laughs> if yeah. you go out there with an e-bike and smash it, I, it's not like you're going to get anything. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So. Exactly. That's a good point. Um, I had a client runner, ultra runner. He was doing an FKT out here in West Marin and he oh, cool. went ahead to try and stash a bag of like extra water and mm-hmm. I think a couple bars and he did like a bear bag and all that stuff. And he like tucked it somewhere away. He got there on his actual FKT gate FKT day and it was gone. <laughs> Oh no. Yeah. So, however, he still took the FKT, right? Oh, awesome. (laughs) Badass. But, um, yeah. So, I mean, I, I, it's, it's a whole different like game too, when you're, you know, out there doing stuff like that, that is, you know, out kind of, you can get out in the wilderness a bit and, um, yeah, stashing your stuff or you can lose it. So yeah, you know, maybe there was an FKT right in front of them and they <laughs> they thought it was just a trail fair. And, you know, that's kind of what yeah. goes in this game too, is like trail fairies or just acts yes. of nature. Like mm-hmm. if there just happens to be someone who dropped a water bottle on the trail, right? you're just, you're in good luck. So maybe yeah. <laughs> you someone's know? Stroop waffle fell out of the back of their pocket. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Someone just saw some wild water hidden in a bush in a bear bag. And they're like, this is my lucky day. So. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. He thankfully had, um, like a portable water filter and there's, I mean, plenty yeah. of water this time of year. So he was able to get water from the streams and stuff, but, um, he was a little nervous. We had him pack some extra nutrition in his bag. So he, he made it out of there just well and fine, which is great. But awesome. yeah, where, where does someone go if they want to look to do an FKT? Like, is there a website? How does all that, that process work? been a couple efforts mm. to get a website up. I think mm-hmm. if you just start Googling, bike FKT, you'll see a yeah. couple encyclopedic style websites. Um, yeah. it's more just kind of living on like Strava and YouTube. A lot of people yeah. use Strava for their timekeeping. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, just grab yeah. a GPS device or a watch and you can get at it. Yeah. Awesome. I dig it. Well, I want to be mindful of your time. Um, I know you're, you're, you're dadding these days and yeah. you got, you got to take advantage of every minute. So, um, and I just saw my lights flicker, so hopefully, um, power's not about to go up, but, um, I want to thank you again so much for joining us for a second episode here, Peter, this is super awesome. Um, I think it's really helpful for our listeners to learn about supplements, quality supplements and which ones you know, are legit. So again, for our listeners, we will be linking that, um, supplement combo in the show notes for you guys. If you want to check out Peter's supplement routine on the feed. And so thanks again, Peter. I appreciate it. Thanks for the chat.